Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, as I was saying before, some other people were able to join us. Thank you so much for taking the time up for you today. It's so important and I am really appreciative of being here among colleagues um, because this is a difficult time. Um, I mean, we've been in this pandemic now going on a year um, and it's really disrupted our, our lives and there's so many different things going on, um, not just with you know COVID-19, but with social unrest and political stressors and professional professional stressors. So today we, we're really focusing on professional self-care and I, I want this to be an interactive session. Um, so we're going to have some breakout opportunities, but also to, um, I really encourage you if you have any kind of questions to please put things in the chat, whatever you have, or even comments. Um, I know last time I did this, did a presentation about personal self-care that people were really um, engaged as far as sharing different you know, ideas and things that have worked for them or different frustrations too. So now we're kind of switching gears into the professional, which sometimes they can, I mean, it's definitely important to blend together. Um, but for the purpose of today, what I really wanted to focus on with, with you all is self-care and pandemic fatigue, because that's real. Like I said, we've been in this a year. Um, having a breakout so that we can check and connect with our colleagues and then focusing a little bit more on professional self-care and then followed up by another breakout where we can discuss some barriers, successes and needs. And then also too, at the end, hopefully if there's time, a wrap up on Q&A, because I want to make sure that we are valuing your time too. Um, so I, I know that we've got a little bit of a late start. Um, so we'll see how much time we have today. But before we get started, a few things that I wanted to just kind of note, just to kind of set the stage is please, I, I know a lot of you have your cameras off. Great. Take care of yourself. Please, you've likely been sitting for a long time already today. So make sure, please stay hydrated. If you need to move, if you need to shift in your seat, other needs, if you need anything in your space to help energize you or to help calm you, those are some ways that you can help to make your space work for you even during this time, but always too. And then also too, you know, because we're all colleagues, it's important for us in a collegial space to be good colleagues to ourselves too. So one thing I want to encourage you all is to be aware of shoulds and must so that, oh, I should be doing this. Or if, if you know, I give an example of something like, oh, I must do this or I should. Self-care is very individualized and you are all your own experts in your lived experiences. So that self-care is very personal. We all are surviving and thriving in different ways during this time um, because they're, they're very challenging and we're all experiencing barriers in different ways and also hoorays in our own ways. So it's really important. And then also too, like I shared earlier, please feel free to mute your video if, if needed um, and mute audio when you're not speaking. But if you have anything, I mean, like I said, use the chat, but also too, if you want to jump in, um, we really want you to be able to feel seen and heard during this time, especially in the breakouts. So I just want to be able to frame that for you all. So with self-care and, and again, an ongoing year of pandemic, um, there's a lot of pandemic fatigue and not just, you know, what, what the CDC says as far as people with the safety protocols and kind of having that exhaustion, but we've had a lot of ongoing psychological stress, um, emotional uh, distress too, and, and these whole ongoing ecological crises that we're experiencing. Um, and even today they were talking, um, I listened to a, a um, uh, speaking of psychology podcast, it's by APA, American Psychological Association, and they've been doing a stress in America survey, and one's coming out, I believe, tomorrow, and they're just saying that a lot of people are still struggling with so many different things, and it's hard because we know what to do, we know how to take care of ourselves, but it's really difficult to enact it during this time. Um, so I, I really want us to show some grace and self-compassion because a lot of people are experiencing sleep disturbances, um, you you know, uh, weight fluctuations with nutrition and other things too. So it is important still to take care of yourself. And then of course, during all of this, we've all had our bandwidth taxed for sure. And, and another thing that I want to kind of emphasize is that, you know, even though we're talking about professional self-care, because we are in higher education, 
a lot of times, this is important because in higher ed, we go into this field and in this space to help others. We, we are, we're helping cultivate, you know, emerging professionals or, or people to elevate their professional kind of paths and their knowledge. Um, so we're all here to, to generally help others. And we usually show up for others, for our students and, and colleagues, but oftentimes show, uh, struggle to show up for ourselves. And it's really important that we do practice what we preach and, and model uh, good ways to take care of ourselves professionally and personally for us and for our students and for our colleagues too. Um, so we really, I, I want us to kind of uh, think about building resiliency that way and, and making sure that we ask our colleagues for help and even are able to ask for help for ourselves. And, and I love this Maya Angelou quote, because we do have two hands and she says, as you grow older, you will discover that you have two hands, one for helping yourself and one for helping others. And that's really important that we do have that reciprocal kind of give and take, but we're also giving to ourselves too at the same time. So I talked a little bit um, last time about the concepts of self-care and it's personal and professional for sure. And the personal is the physical, psychological and emotional, social, leisure and spiritual, which um, you feel free to look at notes and stuff from, from last time. But for pro professional today, it, it's really more the intellectual and kind of occupational kind of realms. And what I really wanted to focus on because we're in a sense in this pandemic of feeling kind of everywhere and nowhere, that we really are able to help to cultivate our, our own physical spaces, our psychological spaces and emotional spaces and boundaries within those so that we can feel like we have a little bit of control in a situation where we don't feel like we have a whole lot of control. So, and this is really important because the, there's risks and benefits of self-care. So if we don't engage in self-care, um, you know, we are sicker often, we have compassion fatigue, burnout, we see decreases in job and life satisfaction, um, reduced immune system functioning, which is so critical during this time and increased stress, which actually can lead to a stress impairment. So on the flip side, if we do engage in self-care ongoing and not in that kind of, oh my gosh, I, I'm in like the danger zone, I need to take care of myself right away, but looking at these things more proactively and preventatively, it helps us to have more energy. We can be more productive. Um, we can have decreased stress, increased happiness and job and life satisfaction, better wellness physically and mentally too. And a, a lot of people are feeling unproductive during this time. I, I mean, I'm, I'm in that boat too, for sure. And I've been working more than ever, I think, because not a lot of us are, are moving from, you know, our workspaces all the time. Some of us are, um, but it's, it's hard because we have so much more on our plates right now, um, just in general, not just with work tasks, but other, you know, family, life, community obligations and to ourselves. So it's, it's really, really difficult. So I was hoping to be able to do a breakout. I'm looking, there's 20 of us in the room. So I'm thinking if I do four breakouts, Kristen and Julie, what do you think about that? Four breakout rooms? That sound good? Yeah. So what I'd hope for is that in this collegial space that you can share with your colleagues, what are some of the biggest professional and personal challenges during this pandemic that you're facing? Um, and, and Kristen and Julie, I think, do you think 10 minutes is good and then we can come back and be brief or should we give 15 minutes? I think 10 would probably be okay. Okay, great. So we'll go ahead and put everyone in breakouts and we'll come back. It is 12.43, so about 12.53, um, 12.54 then. Oh, welcome back. It muted me upon entering back into the, into the main room. Um, so I am curious if you are open to sharing, what were some of the challenges that you all discussed in your breakouts? I know for the breakout room that I was in, we were talking about so many different challenges and kind of changes with workload and, and sleep disturbances and kind of all these difficulties and communications and having a lot of emails and feeling we've never had this many emails and how um, even that we just need to talk to a human sometimes. And because we're spending so much time back and forth in emails and our eyes are getting tired. So I'm curious, what are some other things that were shared in the other rooms of some of the challenges that people are facing? I can jump in from our group. We talked about emails a lot too. <laughs> and just feeling um, the pressure of, of the things that might have been taken care of in a small conversation after class. Now it's an email. And it, so there's so many things that kind of just blow up out of proportion. And then 
to that point, finding a time to sort of stop looking at email and finding a time to end your day. Um, you know, if you see something come in at 1130 at night, do you respond? Do you not? <laughs> um, and yeah, just feeling that our days are sort of blending and the emails are exploding and we're missing that sort of natural connection where you sort of just chatting with people about like, oh, this is upcoming. Let's not forget about X. But now it's like, you got to keep on top of every single thing. You don't have that natural network anymore that you had sort of as you're walking around the hall. Yeah, thanks, Julie. And I think that's so important because it's it's those boundaries, but then also to the expectations that others are placing on us and, and ourselves too. And I, I think sometimes we forget that we're still in a pandemic. And I've talked about this with colleagues too, like adding, like after every task, like I need to do this in a pandemic, like continue to, to say like that we're still doing this. We're still answering emails at 1130 at night in a pandemic. And, you know, it's hard for us to remove email from our phones, but that's a good boundary. One of my students actually, um, because he's in the schools, he created a Google number for just a work number so that he can have those boundaries separate too. So that might be something to consider because I think a lot of us have, have are using our personal devices. I'm guilty of this as well. Um, and everything, all my, all my worlds are just blending together. Oh yeah, and Teams, thanks Melissa. Yes, text messages, Teams, oh, yes. yes. All of those things too, right? Absolutely. What were some of the other things that were shared in the groups? Um, I have a unique situation, but it may turn out that someone else in the group has had something along this lines. Um, I started out with the pandemic in March. In May, I had a health crisis and I was ended up on leave for six months. So um, back in November, I ended up slowly bringing my responsibilities back on, but still facing my medical issues. So um, it's some people are like, Kim, take your time, take your time. You want your health to be first. Other people are like, do this, do this, do this, do this. And so it's hard to, um, and so this, this falls into that category of how to tell somebody I can't take this on more, which is something we talked about in our group. I can't take more on right now. In my particular case, it's because of my health issues, but for, for everyone else, actually it is still about health issues and you know the stress and, and, and mental health and so forth. And how do you say no? And how do you keep from being distracted was another thing we talked about in our group. Yeah, Kim, thank you so much for sharing that and for your personal story too. And I think that is so, so challenging because a, a lot of people are experiencing so many different barriers and things during this time and getting some mixed messaging too about expectations. And I know, I mean, I've had that as well with colleagues and, and different kind of entities and spaces that I'm in across campus and, and it's really tough. And so it is important to say no, because if we're not able to give our personal best, I mean, or even 70%, like, are we going to even be doing that, that good service to that? So I think it's important to have those honest, open dialogues, but it's important because you have to cultivate that space and that culture and climate with whatever spaces you all are in in the institution to be able to have those conversations in a safe and productive way, which can be really tough. Yeah, I just add real quick, that's Absolutely. especially when saying no to that person means they have that additional stress of finding someone else to do it, or they have to do it themselves. And just like um, has been said multiple times, we are all in the same boat. And so, um, so saying no, you've just now given that responsibility back to that person who was hoping to get rid of it or spread it around or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's, and Kim, to your point too, it's difficult because if we're not sharing spaces with our colleagues, it's not that kind of natural teamwork kind of atmosphere. We can kind of say, okay, you take this on, I'll do this and kind of delegate and kind of share. So it's a little bit more, I don't want to say like wonky, but it kind of feels a little bit messy and nebulous right now too, right? And, and I think that's important is we're having to really redefine those boundaries kind of spaces too. And then it's hard to navigate with ourselves because again, it's that kind of should and that kind of guilt and those kind of things too. But it's important that we have those realistic expectations of kind of that good enough and we're all doing the best that we can. And to 
to realistically say, I appreciate you asking me to do this. If I do this right now, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this fully. So can we problem solve and figure out someone else that might be able to take this task on? It's, it's, it's tough. And I think, you know, we all kind of are in this together and I appreciate all of you sharing this because it is, it is so tough. Anything else? You yeah. Know, so I think our group, I put it in the chat. Um, our group definitely all talked about like the different pressures in your personal life and your, on your um, professional life. And some of those you're doing simultaneously, right? Like whether you have a three-year-old or a teenager, you're still saying no, you're still managing the pressures of your kids while you're in your basement, hypothetically doing work. Um, and, and that blurs a lot. And then you're saying no to everybody. You're saying no at work and you're saying no at home. And um, that just builds up that pressure and shame and guilt. Yeah. And, and Kristen, I really appreciate you sharing that too, because you know, our, our brains are hardwired for us to identify what's wrong and to problem solve. That's how we're hardwired. Really, truly it is. I mean, that's, that's how we can survive and, and thrive often. So it's really important for us to acknowledge too, through like what we call like a cognitive reframe to figure out what we are doing. So I, I'd encourage you all, instead of like, oh my gosh, I said no to all these things today. What did you say yes to? Let's, let's change, let's put the script on that. And like, what did I say yes to? What did I do today? And if we were to count all of the time that we've spent with communications and emails, I think that you probably all will put in a full day's worth of work just in that. I feel that way too. I don't know how I'm like, gosh, how am I working 12, 13 hours? Like, it's like, as if I don't have a commute now, I filled my time with other things. And, and I should have probably, this is me shutting on myself, um, but should have safeguarded that in the first place. But it just, it, we were all kind of in an acute crisis mode, you know? So now I think especially a year in, it's important for us because it's still ongoing for us to check in with ourselves and recalibrate those expectations and really making sure that we can have, again, those, the space and boundaries physically, psychologically, and emotionally. And be realistic about that and reasonable and, and the expectations. Right. Anything else that anyone wanted to share? I think a lot of the chat was kind of echoing sentiments and, and just the, the messiness of it all. So I'm curious. I brought it up in our group, but I'm wondering if anybody else is feeling this way. Um, I find I'm working more because it gives me a sense of control. I actually mm -hmm. find peace at my desk and, and I, it is not productive in the end because I am tired. I am taking from my family, I'm, but it gives me a sense of, yeah, I'm saying yes to this. I'm choosing to do this. I am focused. I feel, I, I feel accomplished in some way by sitting at that desk and getting something done. It, you know, I'm, so I'm just curious, you know, I, I don't feel out of control with work, but I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would, I would agree with that. I think that's, it, I hadn't thought about it that way, but I think that's exactly probably what I've been doing as well. It's something, it is something I can sit down and, and make the conscious decision that I'm going to work at 10 o'clock at night, even though I know I shouldn't be. Um, but it's something that I can control and I feel like I'm getting something done and I'm accomplishing something. And so I almost like justifying it to myself that it's okay when, when I know that it's not that you're contributing. It's good work. Yeah. I mean, I've learned a ton of new things. I am, I'm really enjoying my at home work, but I sometimes I'm doing way too much. <laughs> a lot of head nods, Denise, like for the, and, and myself included in there for sure. And I really appreciate that awareness and perspective. And, and I think, you know, a lot of us, again, like I said, we go into higher ed to, to be helpful and to support. So that's what we have kind of you know, a control over, you're absolutely right. And, and I know even for me, I'm kind of working my basement. This is kind of like, all right, I have control over this space versus the outside world, which we don't have much control this time. So it is important though for us too, because we want to prevent that burnout and compassion fatigue, that we are really checking in with ourselves. And it's not an invitation for guilt or shame that we're doing anything wrong, but just checking in of what's going well, how can we do better and feel more productive? How, like, like setting these kind of boundaries and those kind of things too. So just checking in. And I, and I, when I say a check and I, I, I want it to come from a space of, of being of graciousness and being gentle and having that self-compassion too. And like asking like, what do I need right now? 
And it's, it's hard for us to do that, to really be mindful and give ourselves that time for what, for what we need. Gosh, thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. So for professional self-care in a pandemic, I'm going to move forward. I, I know um, probably many of you are feeling this way. I know I do, that some days I just want to reply to emails with OK in this picture. Um, I think that it's a, it's a perfect meme. Um, but one thing I wanted to chat about, too, is that with this being an ongoing crisis, we are all experiencing, and I want us to acknowledge this, too, in our professional spaces, that our fight and flight systems have continuously been activated. Um, our bodies, you know, they're designed to have that fight or flight response. That's We're, we're hardwired that way, um, physically, biologically. There's actually a really good book called um, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers, um, because they can downregulate it quickly. And with humans, we have a lot of stress and it compounds and builds up. So it's really important for us to recognize that when these systems are like upregulating that fight or flight kind of system with any kind of stress, that we work on downregulating our systems and really focusing on that rest and digest or what we call our parasympathetic nervous system activity. Great. We are back. All right. Wonderful. Thanks for letting me know. I lost the, the, the boxes of everyone. So um, like I was saying, you know, we're, we're hardwired to have that fight or flight system. And, and it's really important to downregulate ourselves that way too. And so there's a lot of different things that can help our systems naturally. Nature is a great way um, for those of you with animals and pets. Ha like I know for me, like even petting my cat, it's a way you have their kind of energy to help you kind of co-regulate yourself too. And other people and therapists as well. Um, myself as a therapist, I do a lot of co-regulating for kids and for families and just really kind of holding that space so that we can kind of just change the cadence a little bit of how, how we're feeling and what we're doing. And it's really important too, when we talk about our space and boundaries, for us to be able to have that down regulation, that safety is so important and those feelings of safety. So inside of us, outside of us, outside of our homes, in between everything, you know, and when we do detect any kind of danger or have those kind of upregulated feelings, it's important that we honor that and acknowledge it, but we don't want to sit with it too long. So when we do notice that like, huh, like I'm feeling very agitated or irritable or stressed, or my heart rate is increasing, or I'm having a hard time relaxing and focusing, um, there's some different things that we can do. Uh, I talked about some of these things last time too with personal self-care, but things like, you know, yoga, stretching, any kind of rhythm, deep breathing, which it's all individualized because everyone has a different breathing style and preferences because some people don't like to hold their breath. It can create more anxiety. Some people, you know, you have to figure out what works for you, whether you want to just relax. Um, any kind of self-massage, cold water is really great too, like taking a cold shower, downing some uh, ice water, um, any kind of two, it's, it's important throughout the day, gum, candy, tea, that helps to activate that rest and digest. So those things can really help us to be like, okay, I'm not in a state of distress. I don't need to run from a bear that's chasing me. There's not the stressful kind of thing. So I can slow down. Um, and any kind of gargling, singing, laughing, chanting, those things are really great too. And, and these are things that have been done for centuries. And there's, there's a reason why, because it is helpful for our systems. So with, um, you know, bandwidth and Zoom, um, my goodness, our personal bandwidth and our Zoom bandwidths, right, with our, with our different um, psychological bandwidth, so to speak, there's things that take away from our bandwidth. And then there's things that can add to build resiliency. So I did want to take time, you know, professionally to, to consider this too, because a lot of us are multitasking, you know, with Zooms and their stress, you know, and, and it's hard, especially when we're multitasking during Zoom, this hinders us from being fully engaged and present. And we feel like we're being more productive, but actually the research shows that we're not being as productive. So when we can be fully present with things, we tend to be more productive and it takes less time. So we're more efficient. So I think that's hard because we kind of get stuck in trying to multitask. So I encourage you all to, when you're on a Zoom, try to be very present with just that Zoom. And it's hard too, because we're having, you know, to increase our efforts with communication, which a lot of you talked about in the last breakout, but even like nonverbal behaviors, 
we have to focus so much more. We're looking at faces all day, which naturally in a, in a three-dimensional world, we're not doing that. We're able to take little visual breaks, whereas now it's a lot more complicated. And I talked about this last time too, making sure that you have the Zoom tiles, because if you have the, the speaker view, it's like the Wizard of Oz and it's really uh, scary. <laughs> It's not good for our systems because we're not designed to see like a big face like in our face. Um, and also to, you know, the increased effort that we have to use for sitting with our core strength. So that increased effort for posture ergonomics and, and lack of movement, lack of change of scenery, those things have all been detracting for us. So things that we need to do to add are, are the things that we've talked about before too in, in, in this. We've talked about movement, you know, rest and taking those periods too from different stimuli and inputs. So if you're feeling like, gosh, I spent a lot of time looking at things today. Maybe you just listen to a podcast that or some music for yourself without having to look at anything. Or if you've been listening to a lot of things, if you've been on Zooms and ha have been able to have your cameras off and not really having to attend to things that way, maybe you want to read at night or or draw or do something else that can help to, to not, not anything that you have to use your auditory senses for. Um, and then also to social connection. I think that's the, a lot of people were talking about that too, just that feeling of isolation, you know, whether it's three-dimensional or just even with colleagues. So um, in our group, they were talking about you know, being able to just have a phone call instead of emailing back and forth, how great that can be just to connect. And we're, again, hardwired to connect with each other. So it's really important. And making sure that we, you know, part of our professional self-care and taking care of ourselves is filling our bucket, too, with interest and hobbies outside of work. And, and those things are tough. And, and honestly, things like this, like being with colleagues, it fills my bucket for sure. So this is my form of self-care and it's an interest of mine. Self-care is a passion. Um, ironically, it's, it's a hobby of mine too, you know, just an interest area for research and everything. So it, it, it's helpful to kind of be able to, to sift those things apart. And then I've talked a lot about boundaries. And another thing that helps us to be resilient is, is that hope and silver linings. And, and again, what's going right? So what have we said yes to? What, what did we do today that was productive? And I've talked a lot about self-compassion. And I think that's important because we oftentimes, I mean, so many of you, even with the short stories that you're sharing um, today and your experiences, um, I, I'm seeing a lot of uh, agreements and validation for people and empathy and compassion for others. And it's important that we have that, you know, treat our, treating ourselves like we would our colleagues and our friends. I think that's, it's really important. And again, um, about boundaries, it, it is really critical. And, and I love this Dalai Lama quote that says, in dealing with those who are undergoing great suffering, if you feel burnt out setting in, if you feel demoralized and exhausted, this is even professionally, it is best for the sake of everyone to withdraw and restore yourself. The point is to have a long-term perspective. So right now in this pandemic, we really are in this very long, torturous marathon, so to speak, right? And we want to sprint a lot because we want to be productive and do those things. But we have to think about the long range, right? For our health and wellness long-term. And with that long-term perspective, we really have to take those breaks and, and be able to restore ourselves and, and to help enhance our bandwidth because our batteries are low. If they are low, then it's not going to be, we're not going to be able to be our, our best. So with professional self-care, a couple other things that are really critical. I've been talking to colleagues that work in K through 12 school settings and also to other um, university or higher ed settings. And it's important for us to be good barrier detectors for ourselves. A lot of times we're helping students um, and, and others in, in the university or higher education setting to remove barriers that we like to build bridges for others as part of the helping profession. And it's important that we're good barrier detectors for ourselves. So anything, you know, are there ecological barriers going on or is it hard for us to get into different spaces? What are those things that are close to us that are barriers or things that are further away from us? It's helpful. When I talk about our brains being hardwired for what's wrong, I'd, I'd rather us kind of look at what are the barriers and how can we then problem solve to work through, around, or over those barriers? So it helps us to identify too, what are our needs professionally? 
And then also to the workload and time management. And a lot of us, the things that we've shared, this is a challenge. And I, I will tell you, I'll be the first person to admit, I have to really say, okay, I am done working after this time. Like I have to shut everything. I'm shutting it all down. What happens at the table stays at the table. I'm not going to answer emails. Even if I see it, I'm going to delay answering it <laughs> just for, just for that, that those boundaries and just workload and time management. And also too, it's it's very difficult, especially if we're feeling depleted, but it's important about having those boundaries personally um, in the professional sphere with agency, having our own kind of industry and we can be seen and heard and advocating for ourselves. So what are our needs? And I think that's important, to not just identifying what our needs, but being able to communicate those to the supportive entities around us, our colleagues and even administrators, it's really important. And then also too, it's important for us to be aware of our reactions to work. Um, and, and I like to think of things instead of reacting, because a lot of times we can kind of, especially when we're upregulated, like that fight or flight, that we react to things. So it's important for us to like respond. So even if I have like an email when I have a difficult situation, I have to take some time and space so that I can respond, um, you know, fully so that I can be fully present and not just having that kind of react. Um, that initial reaction. So it's important for us to figure, to check in with ourselves about how we're feeling and then how do we in a healthy way honor that feeling. And I think that's, that's really important too, because even in talking to some colleagues, um, you know, and things that you've shared, we are quick to negate our own feelings and like, you know, worrying about other people and other people's tasks and responsibilities. And it's important for us to kind of check in and like, we have, we have to take care of ourselves. We're, you know, we're a human being first and whatever role we are in this sphere of Wayne State second. So it's really important for us to honor that. And then also two other, other things that are helpful professionally to for self-care is to focus on our professional role. Like what do we enjoy about our role? Why do we come here in the first place? Why do we get in the, our fields in the first place? And then also too, then once we can recognize that, what can we do to improve our role? Those are things that are in our control. They are, there are some of course, systems level barriers and other things in place. But if, again, if we can look at those barriers ecologically and that kind of nested entity because the university is so large, that we can help to work around and work through those barriers too. And then also too, professionally, that connectedness and social support at work. We've talked about that a lot here today already. It's important for us to have that increased belongingness and connection. So I really encourage us to do that and, and focus on things that fill our professional bucket, any kind of professional development, which you all are here today. And then our space, making sure again, that it's safe, secure, supportive, that we can engage in setting ourselves up for success and having routines. Those are things that we definitely can control in our start and our end times. And other things too, because I'm looking at our time, because I want to make sure that we can talk in our breakouts for a short amount of time, but, but the boundaries are really critical. I cannot emphasize that enough. And then working possibly with leadership in our organizations to promote staff self-care, that helps to reduce secondary traumatic stress. Um, it, it's really important. We see higher productivity with that. It helps with, uh, with all of us. And having a culture and climate, the, the context that we work within, when we have transformative leadership, when we have trust, collaboration, and stability, this helps to enhance well-being. So, and it's important for our administrators to take care of themselves too, because they're the models for all of us to be able to take care of ourselves and acknowledge, you know, how we're all feeling right now too, because uh, most everyone's feeling this way. I do not know anyone that feels like they are thriving at this time at all. Anyone that I've talked to in my, you know, uh, in my therapeutic work, any spaces that I'm in. And, and I think, you know, just that emphasis on social support belongingness is important. And another thing, self-care is not a pamphlet. It is not one more thing. We can all use these reminders of grace, self-compassion, and boundaries. And having that good enough mantra, right? And adding that in a pandemic after everything that we are doing, it's important. So in our last breakouts, I hope that you can chat with your colleagues about what are some of the barriers? What are some things that have worked to help overcome those barriers? And how can you give yourself any additional support or attention to self-care? So kind of the actionable steps, like knowing this and kind of thinking about things in our professional spaces, what can we do to help us thrive? for some people to come back. Does anyone kind of want to share so far what uh, what some of the things you discussed in your breakout were? Yeah, I, I'll go. Um, we actually had a lot of things. Um, 
but like, so one is like when we're overwhelmed, how do we ask for help? How do we say no graciously and still keep our jobs? And then um, Denise brought up something that I think is really important um, that when we do respond on the spot to all these messages, whether it's teams or emails or whatnot, um, that the longer it goes on, it's easier to continue to do like it becomes habit. And you don't notice it. It just kind of like yeah. becomes your new normal. Yeah. So it's that kind of, again, that like reacting versus responding, like we're kind of like, like reacting, like, okay. Like, I, and I know that I too, like I I'm getting <laughs> a little like physiologically uh, elevated when I hear like the dings from like my email or like for the buzzing from my text. I'm like, Hey, like what's that now? So absolutely. And, and saying no is hard. I do recommend if you, it, cause it is hard to be a direct communicator sometimes. And there's a book called crucial conversations that does talk about the art of having those kind of crucial discussions. And that's a good audio book too. I have actually my students um, listen to it cause they have to engage in spaces in the K through 12 schools. Um, so that is helpful. Anything else in those breakouts? Turn off the notification ping. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. <laughs> That's worked. Yeah, great. We talked about. Else. Okay. Oh, sorry. We we talked about scheduling time for certain things throughout the day and paying attention to. You know, this is your specific time to work on projects. This is your specific time to check emails. This is your specific time to address things with the family. And this is your, so kind of segmenting your day into different time to kind of be able to balance everything and not feel overwhelmed by all the different stuff. And then the other thing we were talking about was you know, sometimes you just literally have to say no to yourself. No, don't go in and look at your email. <laughs> and if you're saying no to yourself, it's okay and probably appropriate to say it to other people asking you to do things as well. Yeah. I sometimes have to think like how many people have said no to me, you know what I mean? And, and we have to kind of think too. So think to yourself, like how have you ha handled when someone has said no? And, and we make different assumptions about how other people are going to respond, but we usually offer grace. And a lot of people do give that latitude. Julie, what were you going to share? Well, I think our group talked a lot about creating um, a working space, but also creating spaces that are for not working. Um, yes. So saying like, I'm not going to work in my living room. That's my place where I relax. And also having people um, like friends. So setting a timer, like I'm done at four o'clock. Why don't you text me then? So then you're sort of accountable to end your day and have a social moment in your, in your day. Um, and people also talked about how to make other people be accountable in the pandemic. So if you feel like you have a, a coworker or a colleague that's not getting back to you or not responding, um, you know, you want to give space, but you also don't want to take everything on for yourself. How do you do that in the in the virtual space? Is different than we used to do it in the in person space. It, it yeah, you're right. It's that dance of kind of being direct, but also giving grace. And I think it's okay to say because some of us do need deadlines, and that's okay. Like I've had colleagues like, okay, hey, like I need this by this date. Is that reasonable? Yes. Thank you so much. That's helpful. I'm gonna make sure I prioritize this too, so we can help each other too and communicate that. And I think that is something that is definitely ongoing. Um, because I know we're running out of time. I did want to just talk about one last thing. Um, this Japanese concept meaning um a reason for being its icky guy. And I encourage you once you get the slides to, to look at this and kind of map out because our reason for being our, our combination of blending of things of what we love, what we're good at, what we can be paid for, which is what we all are here and what the world needs. And I think a lot of our professional roles can fill these buckets, but if there's things that you feel it's not, we have to get these in other ways. So I think it's really important for us to look at that and conceptualize it that way and kind of help us take care of ourselves professionally. Um, so I do have a link. This is a school psychology self-care website my colleague and I created, but there's personal things. If you want some ideas, there's different podcasts and other things as well that you're welcome to um, explore floor. And I just really appreciate you all taking the time today for yourself and being here for each other. This definitely was professional self-care for me as well. So I appreciate you. Thank you. And remember, we are doing this in a pandemic. <laughs> Take great care.